Okay. So, hello everyone. Thank you for coming, staying a little bit longer for us. Uh, my name is Pavel Neyman, this is Fernando Coelone. We are both Agile practitioners in Red Hat. And today we are going to speak about why processes are much more important than people. And you may ask why we think that. Uh, we think that because it's one of the values of uh, Agile Manifesto. You see, right? Or, or it's actually the other way around. Of course, it's the other way around. It's individuals and interactions over processes and tools. And don't get us wrong, we don't think that the processes are not important. Of course, every project or work needs our processes, definition of done, scope, of budget, etc., etc. But we should not forget that the people are delivering the product. People are defining the scope, the definition of done. People are using the tools and infrastructure, and people are defining the very processes we are using every day. So only if you develop, if you focus on developing teams and individuals, and you are paying interactions, uh, paying, uh, paying attention to interactions we are having every day, then this makes you set up the project for success much better. But sometimes we don't do that. Sometimes as if we forgot that individuals are over processes. And sometimes we don't do that because it's not easy. Uh, people are complex and sometimes interactions are not comfortable. So we are avoiding this. But luckily we have the Agile Manifesto who helps us remind us that individuals interactions are over processes and tools. It was already mentioned in the uh, Fernando's first presentation that the Scrum and Agile Manifesto sometimes are used interchangeably, but obviously it's not true. The Manifesto of Agile Software Development speaks about values and principles, and the people who wrote it and signed it believe that when you follow the principles and when you live the values, that is the better way how to deliver software. On the other hand, we have uh, frameworks like Scrum and Kanban or XP, and these are systems with specific rules and roles, which helps us create environment in which we can live the values and practice the principles easier. But they are not the same thing. Obviously, roles and rules are not the same as values and principles, and we should keep that in mind. So the implication of this is that you can live a value of values without actually using any specific rules. So there are teams which are not using Scrum or Kanban or anything particular, but they can still pursue the Agile software development. Unfortunately, it can be true also other way around. You can follow all the rules of any specific framework, but you can still do not living a value, right? You can have all the retrospection, all the ceremonies, but if you don't understand what they are for, you are not pursuing the Agile software development anyway. So, oh, very descriptive slide. So uh, there are two typical mistakes we are doing with this pursuit of Agile software development. So first, we tend to impose the frameworks on teams. And the second, we impose that without giving them support so they understand how they use it. And then if uh, such a thing happens, uh, the framework is only administration for the, tomb, for the team and it's perceived as, a, as a something additional, right? And it gets a bad reputation. And then your team fails. And who are you gonna blame? The framework, obviously. And it makes sense because the framework is the thing which brought us all the meetings on the rules and on the roles we do not understand. So when we impose a framework on a team without additional support, it's very likely that the framework, the change we brought will get the bad reputation. And of course I can ask, I mean, why are you blaming the framework? The framework is only a tool. You choose the tool. But do not forget that unfortunately sometimes the people are not the one who chose the tool. Someone chose the tool for them and didn't give them enough additional support to understand how to use the tool. And Fernando is going to speak about uh, the consequences of this. So we work with a lot of people at Red Hat and uh, we talked 
a lot to them about Agile, and it's very interesting that they always have some complaints or you know, some not so nice feedback about it. And I, I will show here some typical things that they say about Scrum, about Agile in general, and I will go uh, quickly on maybe what's behind on, on those things or those complaints. So the first one is from, from software engineers in general at, at Red Hat that we uh, talk about to is that we have too many meetings, right? They are saying we have too many meetings or, you know, the, the meetings are just too long. Why Scrum is telling us to, you know, we have plannings and retrospectives and daily stand Why? Why we have so many meetings? But the fact is that if a team is doing, working with Scrum, for example, if they are working in a two-week sprint, they should be spending around, I don't know, two weeks, 40 hours a week, 80 hours. They should be being these Scrum meetings for seven hours, eight hours, so 10%. If they are having these more meetings, then the problem is not with the Scrum, this is not, it's not with the meetings or the things that Scrum is saying that they, they should do. Maybe, maybe the problem is elsewhere. Maybe the problem is with that very messy product backlog. Maybe the problem is the team does not know why they are doing the things that they are doing. They don't know the goal, so it's elsewhere. So this is one of the things that uh, one of the software, in, software engineers tend to talk about when we uh, are working with Scrum uh, specifically. The other thing that some of the software engineers think is like micromanagement, right? It's like you are always asking for things, but don't confuse micromanagement with transparency, right? When we want everyone to talk to each other, show the results, and when we have the, the Scrum meetings, the Scrum ceremonies, it's not for the Scrum master, it's not for the product owner, right? It's really for the team to communicate and understand where they are, right? For my teams, uh, when I, I don't know, sometimes I don't go to a daily stand-up, and they say, you, you didn't go. I said, yeah, I don't need to. Did you go? Yes. I don't need to be there. I need just to make sure that the team is having those stand-ups and communicating uh, with uh, each other. So that's another thing that they say. Another thing is that all of this is too complex for me. Oh my God, I just want to code, right? Living the dream, right? I just want to code. I don't want to think about value. I don't want to think about, you know, uh, other things. I don't want to, oh my God, talk to other people. I don't want this. I just want to code. And this environment seems to be so complex. And you know what? The Agile software environment, Agile is more, uh, it's uh, healthier in, in the complex environment. Right? It works best in a complex environment. And software development is a complex environment. So, you know, uh, these are the things that software engineers would have to, to deal with. You are in a very complex environment. The other thing, that, you know, it's a kind of complaint, is that frameworks and methodologies are not flexible enough, right? So you think about Scrum, oh my God, 15 minutes stand up. If you have a two week sprint, everything is time boxed. But the thing is, is that with this frameworks with these methodologies, what you're getting is you're getting the short feedback cycle. If you were here in the previous sessions, you saw uh, Stuart talking about it, other people talk about it, because it's very important, right? The short feedback cycle is very important. So you have the time box because it also get, uh, brings consistency to what you're doing. And if it brings consistency, in the longer term, we we'll reduce the complexity of what you're doing. The next one is like, we don't have the opportunity to fail at all. And well, that's right, right? 
you don't have the opportunity to fail. If you fail, we, the Scrum police, we're gonna get you and you are in big trouble. No, that's not the case. In fact, you, you can fail. And if you fail, you just should learn. Jan is not here, Jan, no? Um, there was a great talk this morning about product owner and he mentioned this. It's okay to fail, right? If you learn something. And as I just mentioned, you have the short feedback cycle, right? So if you fail, you can learn and recover fast. Maybe in, in a two week sprint, three week sprint, and not in a two year cycle when you are just delivering your product, right? And the last one is that it doesn't work with distributed teams. Well, we have challenges, yes, time zones, you know, lack of personal relationships, but we are in a global environment and it really, it can work. And, uh, it is, and there are ways to, to make it happen. So, uh, you know, these are the complaints that, some of the complaints that we've seen and we talk to people about. And the thing is, is that we need, we as Agile practitioners, we need to work with the people, with the teams, to let them define their own way how to be agile, right? So not, as Pavel said, we are not imposing anything. We are just working with them to make them better. So they are defining uh, their way how to be agile. And always with those 12 principles in mind, right? To satisfy the customer, you don't need Scrum. You just need to have in your mind that what you want to do when you're doing whatever that you're doing that you are satisfying someone, or right? it's your customer. So let them work in their own way to be, how to be agile, but always keeping this in mind. And I have an example. This is one of my teams. They are working with Scrum. They are working in two week sprints. They have their reviews. They have their retrospectives. But when I joined, you know, the first planning meeting that I went there, Two week sprints. I think they were in the room for five hours, right? F five hours, don't remember. It's like the morning and the afternoon. And what was the problem there? It was not that the scrum meeting, the planning meeting, that this scrum was the problem. It was because the, the, the backlog was not prioritized or they didn't have any goals to, to achieve. And so it's just long discussions about nothing that is related to the planning. Right, so, and we, as your practitioners, we work with them and we try to see these problems and with incremental changes, we try to improve them. And now, Pavo is gonna talk about one of his things. Okay, okay, yeah. so, uh, another theme from my, ex uh, from my experience, so they don't use any specific framework, it's like combination of everything they heard, I think. And, but they have kind of a monthly planning, we can say this, and they have a weekly synchronization meeting when they check regularly when they are on the track with the plan. And one day they, they thought that maybe this weekly meeting is, is too much. You know, it's a one hour for everyone, very difficult conversation, uh, and maybe it's not fragmented enough. Maybe we would like to have two meetings, half an hour each during the week. And we have a discussion and we came to the conclusion that we have, a, we have no idea what's better because we couldn't foresee all the implications which uh, it might have. So we made an experiment. We tried for a month, and after a month, we came together again and decided whether it works for us or not. The decision was that it doesn't work, so we went back for uh, the one uh, weekly meeting. What we are trying to say is that we are borrowing this stuff from Stuart, so thank you, Stuart. Thank you very much. So you should pursue incremental improvements. What does it mean that you should always strive to be better, but only small steps. Do not change everything at once, because then you will first go right in the chaos, and the second you will have no idea which change brought you the benefit, and which change make a situation worse. And yes, please experiment. You have to admit that you are not going always to see all the implications of the change you are proposing, so it's always safe to try for some time, days, weeks, months, depending on the change, 
and revert back if that doesn't make sense. Make your own way how to achieve what you want to achieve. And the last thing is, please revisit if what you do currently still makes sense. Because sometimes we forget that the environment around us changes and the people are changes, but we are still keeping doing the same thing over and over again because we always did it. So revisit what you did, uh, what you do, whether it still applies for the situation. And the last thing before we end, Agile has no brain, so please use your own. And keep in mind that the frameworks are not here to solve the problems for you. They are here only to make the problems more visible so that you can solve it. Okay, not every time it's a comfortable thing. You know, not, it's not easy to look at ourselves and see our priorities are unclear, our scope is unclear, we don't have no vision. But otherwise, how else we are going to improve? And so these are the key takeaways from the presentation, if you forget already. So you can live values without any specific rules. Uh, let people define their own way how to pursue agile software development. Pursue incremental improvement, experiment, and revisit if the practice you are using still makes sense uh, for you now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For a team that has no, uh, basically, uh, any kind of framework, uh, what would you suggest? Where would you suggest to start with? <laughs> because you said to do something incrementally, so where to start from? So if you want to pursue agile software development, start, for example, with the principles. Start with the values and take a look at what you are doing now, whether it reflects there or not. And if you have some stuff which you think don't reflect there, pick one and try to change stuff. You know. And that's all. Important is uh, to have the discussion about it with your team so that you have the buy-in from the team. Then they would like to experiment, especially if you are new and you don't have any you know, agile practitioner or anything. Most likely you are going to make some bad choices, but that's normal. But you just still need to try to make things different so that you see what fits for you. Okay. Did, was it helpful? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. No, no. Okay, so thank you again and yeah. Thank you. Thank you. See you.